Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in last uh, video we have seen what is do while loop. Okay, now in this video we are going to check it out what is for loop. This particular loop is extensively used in programs. Okay, so let's check it out what is for loop is all about. So as any looping construct, this loop is also consists of three parts. What is it? Initialization, then we are having condition and then we are having increment and decrement of the counter. Okay. So what is initialization? Initialization determines uh, my starting of the counter. Right. So my counting should start with particular number. So that is being determined by initialization. Then we are having condition. Condition determines where my counting should end right so a particular task i need to do five times so i have to give a condition that so counter should execute five times okay so you have to give the condition likewise then we are having increment and decrement which actually uh, incrementing or decrementing your counter based on the program okay so let's check it out uh, what is how for loop can be written so for loop we are having for for is a keyword then this statement within within the parenthesis you have to provide initialization then we are having condition and then we are having increment and decrement okay so in one line itself you have written initialization condition and increment and decrement then you are having curly braces which determines the uh, body of loop that means task that you need to perform okay so basically even if i have written this particular thing in one line that doesn't mean this will happen in uh, what i can say in that line itself even if i have written initialization condition and incre uh, increment and decrement in one line the execution is a bit different okay so we will see that uh, through a program so here what i'm having see uh for then i'm having initialization over here int i is equals to one then i'm having i less than 10 that is my condition and then here i'm having i plus plus that is increment of particular variable i so what will happen in this case first of all the count a variable i is get initialized to one okay once this is being done i'm going to check the condition first so my condition says that the value of i has to be less than 10 so is one is less than 10 yes answer is true so as my condition is true what is going to happen it will enter into body of loop okay so it will enter to the body of loop and uh, it will perform the task which you have written inside it so right now what i have written here i'm just printing the value of i so value of i will get printed after that after executing all these statements in this particular curly braces at the end this increment will happen so increment even if i written over here it will happen after executing all these statement in the body of loop so i will increment and a new value of i will be two okay so i is two then again what is going to happen it is going to check the condition you have to uh, keep in mind that initialization happens only once okay whereas condition checking and increment these two things will happen several times so here what is happening now again i'm checking the condition two less than 10 i'm getting answer as true and then i'm again i'm printing value of i in this case it is two two will get printed right so likewise it will keep on happening until i is reached to 9 okay 
so when it will reach to 9 after printing 9 it will increment again okay after incrementing it will it becomes 10 so when i becomes 10 what 10 what will happen it will again go to condition it checks the condition here the condition becomes false because condition says that 10 less than 10 is it true no it's false so it will directly come out of loop it will not execute the body of loop over there okay so this is the way your for loop is going to execute now we will see one small program on this okay now in this program what i want to do is i want to print table of two okay so let's check it out how it will happen so i'm having class table over here I'm having main method then I'm having initialization over here that you can do over here or directly you can do it over here okay that means you can just write here int i is equals to 1 that can do okay so right now the value of i is initialized to 1 this condition says that until i is less than equals to 10 this body of loop will execute so i'm checking the condition whether one is less than equals to 10 so it says yes it is so i'm going to execute the task now what task i'm doing i'm just multiplying this number i with 2 so i that is 1 i'm multiplying with 2 so i'm gonna get an answer that is 2 after that i'm incrementing the counter so counter uh, after incrementation of counter i uh, the value of the value of i will becomes 2 okay so again it will go to condition okay now condition uh, says i less than equals to 10 that is 2 also less than 10 it gives me true uh, as it is true it will again enter to the body of loop it will again multiply 2 into 2 that is 4 after that it will print it after printing it will increment the counter after incrementing again the condition checking will happen and this will happen how many times it will happen 10 times okay so this is the way your for loop will get execute now let's see some combinations that we can use with for loop okay the first combination is with comma okay so here i'm having class sample then i'm having main method now here i'm having two variables int a and b okay uh, b is initialized to a value uh, 4 okay and uh, then i'm having for loop where i'm having a is equals to 1 and condition says a has to be less than b okay so once this has been uh, this condition is true what is going to happen it will execute the body of loop okay in this body of loop what i'm doing i'm printing value of a and b and here decrement of b is happening okay so let's check it out how it will work first of all so what is going to happen first of all b is assigned with a value 4 okay and a is assigned with a value 1 now i'm checking the condition here that is a has to be less than b so what is the value of a that is 1 and i'm checking whether it is less than 4 or not so condition says yes so it is giving me true as it is true what is going to happen it will print the value of a and b so what is value of a that is 1 and what is value of b b is 4 getting now after that value of b will get decrement so b value becomes 3 okay and a value will get increment so well value of a becomes 2 okay so what is going to happen again it will go going to check condition so condition says that 2 less than 
b ka value is 3 so 2 less than 3 is it true yes here also it is true so it will enter into body of loop now what is going to happen it is going to print a and b so what is a ka value uh, the value of a is 2 and value of b is 3 now after that what is going to happen again um, it will decrement the value of b so b value becomes 2 and in increment the value of a a becomes 3 okay now again it will go and check the condition now condition says that is now the condition becomes like this 3 less than 2 is it true no in this case it becomes false so as it is false it will come out of the loop okay now this particular uh, execution or this particular program we can write by using comma because here this initialization and decrement this initialization and decrement can be written simultaneously you don't have to actually write it separately so how we can write it down let's check it out here what I'm doing initial uh, declaring a and b given value to a and b 1 and 4 written the condition and here itself what I've done incremented uh, incremented the a and decremented the b okay it will execute in the same way which is uh, which happened earlier okay and it will give me same output okay so only thing is rather than uh, what I can say writing initialization of b separately decrement of b separately you can write it or accommodate it in single for loop okay so this is the one combination we are having let's say the another combination yeah now in the examples till now what we have seen is the variable which is actually doing the counting is being used in the program to do some task right now it may possible that your uh, what i can say variable which have uh, initialized may not be used to do counting okay let's see how it is so here i am having one variable boolean and boolean you know it holds values that is either true or false so variable name is boolean done okay done is an uh, okay then we are having false value which is assigned to done okay now here i have written for loop for loop says that um, initialization which is i is equals to one then i have condition over here now the see see this condition condition says not done what do you mean by not done you know what not uh, operator does it negates that means if you are having false value it makes true if you are having true then it will make it false so not done that means false becomes uh, if apply not to it it becomes true so until this uh, uh, done is true what is going to happen it will execute the body of loop then you are incrementing the counter now see this is the combination i was talking about that the condition is not be, depends on your counter variable instead of that it is based on some other variables some other uh, what i can say logic so what i'm doing here in the body of loop i'm just uh, having if statement in which i'm just checking some interrupt if it if it is interrupted then i'm initializing the value for done is true okay so let's check it out how it will work so first of all done which is having value false then it is going to start i is equals to 1 okay my loop will start with 1 it is checking value for done that is false and it will negate it and it becomes true as the condition it becomes true over here it will enter to loop of the, uh, inside the loop now what is going to happen it is going to check for interrupted so suppose if interrupted is true 
what will happen the done will have a value true okay after that what is going to happen value of i will be increment so i becomes 2 okay then it will go and check the condition now what do you mean by uh, what will happen over here negate of done that means what is the value of re recent value of done the recent value of done is true so if you negate it it becomes false so condition becomes false as the condition is false you will come out of the loop okay so this is the one more combination which you can use then another combination which is there which will give you infinite loop see here i'm having for and i haven't specified initialization condition and increment decrement just i have given two semicolons okay that means i have i don't know what is my condition i don't know what what is starting point i don't know the ending point i don't have any increment or decrement this type of combination will give you infinite loop that means your a particular task which you have written over here will never end it will keep on executing okay so these are some combinations which you have seen now